Artzuka! Hey, I'm Jeremy. Let's Artzuka. <laughs> LED lights are a whole lot of fun. Let's make an Artsuka light stick. So first thing I'll need is a big piece of paper. And I happen to have one here in my trunk of junk. Now this will work perfectly. But what I want to do is start a nice roll from one corner to the other. And roll it up as tight as I can. So just little fingers at first, and then eventually, we can get all of our hands into it. And once you get to the end, just work it around a little bit, just so it's nice and tight all the way around. Then once I've done that, I'm ready to add a piece of tape. One piece right there should do the trick. I have my stick, but now I kinda wanna make it look a little bit more flashy. So, I'll cover the entire thing in tin foil, and it'll look like that. This looks great because it's nice and shiny and light loves to bounce off tinfoil. And it also feels really cool. I need a place to hold on to it, so I'll create a handle. And for the handle, I'll use some green tape. To make a handle, really easy. All I have to do is wrap the tape all the way around. And around, and around, and around, and around. There we go. Now I'm ready to add my lights. I found these at a toy store and there are lots of different kinds. And that works just by bouncing it off the table. This one comes with a magnet. And this one here has a strap. And I really like this one because the strap will make it easy to slide onto my stick. So I'll get it on here and slide it right down just like that. Now, if you want to attach the one with the magnet, tape the magnet right to the stick. Watch this. The light can connect right to the stick. Now, this one here is really cool, and I thought it would be great to poke it right onto the top. That way, every time I bounce it off the table, it'll start to light. Once I've covered the entire thing in lights, I'll have this amazing light stick. Let me show you something else we can do with our amazing light stick. All right. Now with a few of these materials, just a few strips of cardboard and a piece of wax paper, I'm gonna make a filter to shine the light through. So I'll take my pieces of cardboard and make myself a frame, just like this. I can tape all of the pieces into place. Once I have my cardboard strips taped into place, I put the wax paper on one side and decorate the other with tin foil. It looks like this. And in the dark, my light stick is even more amazing. But watch this. When I put it underneath the filter, we get our own light show. When the lights are up close to the filter, they're really bright and sparkly. But when they're further back, they all blend together. If you really want to have a blast, make a bunch of those sticks, stick them in a box, then cover the box in tinfoil, put the filter on top, and you have yourself an Artzuka party in a box. Bam, 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 bam. Dun, 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 it. Woo! 
To make your Hartsuka light stick, start off with a sheet of cardstock you roll up from corner to corner, nice and tight. Then, cover it with tin foil. Foil is great because light bounces off it. Next, add LED lights. You can get them at toy stores and bargain stores. I like to use lots of different kinds and colors. To make your light stick really pop, you can make a filter using cardboard and waxed paper. I decorated mine with some more shiny foil. Turn out the lights and watch your very own light show. The waxed paper gives the lights a fuzzy glow. Hazuka! Add more of these sticks to a foil lined box and you've got your very own Artzuka party in a box. Hazuka! For more fun things to make and do, check out kidscbc.ca slash Artzuka. You know what's cool? Painting on windows. Especially if you're not gonna get in trouble. The first thing you have to decide is what you wanna put on your window. I'm gonna create an underwater scene, but you can make anything you want. Now you don't need to start off with a drawing, but sometimes it helps. Here I have a drawing of a fish. I'll take this fish and I'll just slide it right into my plastic sleeve here. If you don't have a sleeve, you can use any thick plastic. Step one complete. Now we're ready to paint, but first we have to mix up our own paint. This paint recipe is awesome. All you have to do is mix up a little bit of fabric glue, some food coloring, and just a drop of dish soap. So we'll start off with the glue. Yeah, there we go. Big, thick, sticky glue. Lots of that in there. Now I can add the food coloring, and I just need a few drops. Then for the final ingredient, a drop of dish soap. Now take a look at that, that is just super cool. The paint starts to mix itself around when you add in the dish soap. But to speed things up, I'll just grab a little stir stick and mix it up myself. It's really fun to just watch the paint slowly transform into the color you wanted. And I've made lots of other colors, look at this. Once I've made all my paint, I'm ready to start painting. This fish is coming straight from the coral reef, so it's going to be colorful. I'll start off with a nice color of pink right on the top of the head here. And you'll notice that I'm actually putting the paint on really thick. That's important because when it dries, I'm going to peel it off the plastic. Now, I'll add some light blue. You can pick the colors that you like best when you create your painting. How about some yellow? Once I've filled the entire thing with this paint, I set it off to dry. You don't even need to have a drawing to start off with. You can actually paint right on the plastic. So here I have a blank sheet inside a plastic sleeve. And I'll start painting whatever I want on the plastic. I think I'll make an underwater background for my fish. And with some big stripes going up like this, I'm just making some seaweed. And now once I've let it all dry, I'm ready to start to peel. Now here's one I did earlier. Check it out. When it's nice and dry, we have this amazing picture. It has all these beautiful colors, it's nice and shiny, and when it dries, 
you can see through it. Now we can peel it off. Just peel it off slowly so we don't make any tears or rips. Now we're ready to put it on the window. What do you think? If you don't like where you put it, you can move it. I bet you can make something great too. Did you miss some of that? These stick-on gels make great window decorations. You'll need a sheet of plastic or a plastic sleeve and my not-so-secret paint recipe. Start with some fabric glue. I got some at a craft store. Then add a few drops of food coloring and finish it off with a drop of dish soap. Doesn't that look cool? Mix it up and start painting. You can paint right on the plastic and use any color you mix. Make sure you paint it on thick. When it dries, it dries see-through. Then all you have to do is peel it off the plastic and stick it right to the window. I made an underwater scene to go with my submarine. What will you make? Send me a picture of your stick-ons to artzooka.com. Hi, Jeremy. My name's Jack, and I challenge you to make something out of gloves and buttons. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's see what I can artzooka. Okay, gloves. It's a chicken. It's all in how you look at it. Art? Artsuka! Sometimes when I draw eyes, I do this. A big circle with a smaller circle in the middle. But with a few cool tips, we can make eyes that look really real and have a nice pop. And I'll show you how. I'm gonna start off by using some chalk and charcoal. Now really look at your eye and look at the way that it's shaped. So my eye is shaped like an oval instead of a big circle. So I'll start off with an arch on the top, like that. 
and then finish it off on the bottom. We have our nice big oval, and now I want to make the iris, the colored part of the eye. The iris, instead of one little dot, is actually a couple of lines here, and we have our iris. This would be the colored part, but in the center of that would be the pupil. The pupil is just one black circle like this. And when I'm using this charcoal, it's really great to just smudge it right in. Now I can add some color. So with the color, I'll make a blue eye today. My eyes are actually kind of green, but I like blue eyes, so I'll start a blue. And you'll notice I'm not only using the tip of my chalk, I'm also using the side. I'll bring it really close into the pupil. Then once I have my color, watch this. I'll take my finger. I'm smudging the pupil to blend it into the iris. I love working with chalk and charcoal because they smudge like this. So when I look in my eye, if you look in the corner right in here, there's this little red spot. And that, I can just draw in right here. Right now, that's a bit too red. But that'll change when I blend it later on. Now I have the basic part of the eye, but I want to get a little bit of the outer eye. And you can see I have an eyelid up here. I'll just grab another color. And with the side of my chalk, just give a nice big sweep, just like that. And then I can take some other colors just to give a little bit of a shadow and run that right through as well. And once that's done, just run my fingers through to smooth it out. And we can do a little bit of the bottom as well. So now that I have the basic shape, I can go over with my fingers, do some smoothing out, just to kind of blend it all together. And then if you want, you can add some heavy lines to punch it up. We'll bring out the iris again, with a nice big heavy line here, and then here. And again, run through that with my finger. Now I can even take in some white. I'll put the white right over the red so it's not so bright. And now it looks more real. It's really fun to get your fingers in there and just smudge it all around. And you'll notice that you come up with some great colors. Now here's another quick little tip. Take your white and just by adding a few little marks, a mark here, a mark there, and one right up here, it kind of makes it look like there's a little bit of light shining into the eye, and that gives it a realistic look. Add some eyebrows. Put a little more color in. Check it out. One of my best pupils. Take a look at this. I have so many fingerprints on this picture that I don't even need to sign it. When you're working with chalk and charcoal, it gets messy. As far as I'm concerned, that's a big part of the fun. We've got lots of great drawing tips at Artsuga.com. Artsuga! And now time for an Artsuga safety message. Remember, when making mobiles, you may not want to use a real rocket. For my Artsuka Recycle Challenge, I challenged myself to make something out of a pencil case, a water sprayer, and a marker cap. I put it in a movie starring Paper Bag. Come on, let's see what I made. I also put something else in my movie, a recycled toothpaste bottle. 
See if you can spot where I put it. Now, sit back and enjoy Cinema Artsuka. Here's the water sprayer. Here's the pencil case. And here's the marker cap. Can you guess what it is? Yep, it's a fire truck. Now let's see it in a movie. I made a fire truck out of a pencil case, a marker cap, and a water sprayer. Hey, did you spot the recycled toothpaste bottle? Take another look at where I put it. I challenge you to make something out of a pencil case, a marker cap, and a water sprayer. Be really creative, anything goes. And when you do, take a picture and email it to me at the Artsuka website, artsuka.com. What will you Artsuka today?